It's the weekend, I'm kinda tired, let's look at Steam. Last move is another dark horror puzzle game. Jeju's Fantasy Action Hack and Slash Adventure Action RPG. Now this exemplifies another thing I really hate about game trailers. Little bits of action with a lot of annoying text with that just animates unnecessarily, doesn't really say a lot, doesn't even look good. Just don't. Just put gameplay on. If you want to have some titles, just put it at the bottom or the top, just any way away from the action. I see so many making this mistake. And here's another example. The text looks better. The gameplay itself looks fun, like top-down action, shooting, but the keeps coming with annoying titles in the middle that really don't do anything to sell me on the game. Okay, you have 12 maps, so what? Show off my skills? To who? It's a single player game. And as you can see, the gameplay itself looks kind of fun. It's just that the UI and everything else looks horrible. Okay, so here we see, I guess, some gameplay with titles at the bottom. So that's an improvement. But the titles are too big for how close the camera is to the action. And I'm not even sure if we're watching action here. Also, as I said before, take a look at how many Fox games there are. Return from Core, Crafting Early Access Sandbox Automation. I don't know about you, but this feels like a Core Keeper ripoff. Or at least someone thinking, oh, Core Keeper made a big splash, let's do that too. Far West, Early Access Open World Survival Craft Sci-Fi. Utilize alien technology, explore, build bases, craft, and farm. The cinematics look good, not gonna lie, but it's easily ruined by a gameplay video that runs like ass. Also presenting Exhibit 468 in why you shouldn't just copy games that are successful. This looks pretty much exactly like Ghost Runner, but worse. Also in this title it looks like the game is called Hillfish. Killfish isn't a great name either. The way you kill those robots looks really bad. And even if you didn't copy a game, even if you just thought about the same thing at the same time, which does happen, if you see something coming out which looks exactly like yours, make something different. Don't change the game, don't dump it and start new, but at least do something different. Here's another important point. Stop it with the random black screens with nothing going on in the middle of the trailer. I, as I'm sure a lot of people who are just looking at random games, if they don't see anything interesting, they just skip it. And I just happened to skip right into the black parts until I looked back. So. At first glance, it looks like this trailer is completely black all the time. Stop it. And look at the thumbnail for the next trailer, come on. And looking at the actual gameplay itself, it looks really bad. Aztec Tiki Talisman, action adventure, platformer, family friendly, 3D. Well, looks like a basic action platformer, that's what you want. Lore Haven, Cursed War, RPG Strategy, 4X, Action Adventure. I don't know what's Action Adventure about it, looks like a very standard X crawl strategy game. Harmony in the Wild, Adventure Casual Platformer Puzzle 3D. Example number 416 for how many Fox games there are. Stellaris Nexus is a social strategy game offering all the depth of a full spectrum 4X experience played start to finish in about one hour. Choose a unique faction and leader and challenge up to seven other players, plotting, battling, and backstabbing your way to galactic dominance. Currently sitting at 85.5% on 135 reviews. Apparently this is like playing Stellaris, but rather quickly. So if you like forex strategy games and you don't have the time to play a lot of them, maybe you should try this. I've already heard some very good reviews about it. Den of Wolves is a co-op heist FPS from the creators of Payday the Heist, Payday 2, and GTFO. Co-op heist online co-op FPS combat. First of all, it's a good looking game. Second of all, we barely have any gameplay. The release date is still to be announced, so that's kind of understandable. But I still think that if you're putting up a page, you should have something similar to gameplay. I guess the only one exempt from that is people whose games are already well known and established and you know their style. Still not an excuse though. United 1944 is an innovative WW2 shooter combining weapon crafting, base building and team strategy. Huh. At first it does look like a very standard World War II shooter, but they have crafting and base building. And territory defense? 
I don't think a game with crafting and base building should have game modes. So this feels kind of off. And it's an extraction shooter? Now I'm confused. Wizardom is a retro FPS that puts you in the role of a mage on a quest to track down the source of chaos. Chaos? Definitely looks like a retro shooter. So if you like that, but personally, when I'm seeing this, I just want to play Heretic and Hexen again. Fantasy Craft is a medieval fantasy life simulator with survival and RPG elements. Build, craft, hunt, go fishing, farm, cook, brew potions, explore the world, go treasure hunting, and fight monsters. Sitting at 70%, so not bad considering it's rather new. Still in early access, so okay. Kinda looks like a more medieval-oriented Valheim. Oh, there's lock picking. It actually looks kind of cool, but I don't think I'm ready to pay 20 bucks for it. Power Wash Adventure Simulation Casual Immersive Sim Life Sim. Wow, that's a lot for a Power Wash Simulator ripoff. Also, the washing animals, and I don't think animals would like to be power washed. I actually washed cows when I was young, and they were very much against it. Emplacement combines the elements of turn-based strategy and builder games. You must play styles to construct farms and barracks, use them to produce resources and units, connect tiles and rotate them around to create different layouts and strategies. It's pixel art, but it looks kinda good. I think I like the idea. I might be into it actually. Currently sitting at 70%, but there's only two reviews, so that's understandable. The only thing that's bothering me is Besides how it looks, the rest of the presentation is awful. It runs like ass, chromatic aberrations, it always shakes. If that can't be turned off in-game, then I don't know. There's a demo, so I might try it. Yeah, I heard about this game. Mouse is a kind of retro shooter in the style of Steamboat Willy. Probably using the fact that the original characters in Steamboat Willy will become public domain in 2024. So, it's kind of funny. And it actually looks like it's trying to be a very good retro shooter, but I think I need more than that right now. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2, the sequel to the original Hellblade's Senua's Sacrifice. We've seen it at the Game Awards, it still looks awesome. I wonder what they're doing with the story right now? I haven't played the original, though I really want to. It's on my list somewhere. And I think the whole idea is kind of cool. No release date, though. Nelbuke's Dungeon Master looks to be another... Dungeon Keeper wannabe, currently sitting at 68% with almost 700 reviews. So that's interesting. Apparently it's not that great yet. And it is out. I've seen some gameplay of it and it looks interesting, but right now it seems to be that you need to wait a few more months, I guess, for patches and updates. Beyond Sunset Early Access Action Adventure Old School Cyberpunk First Person Shooter with Rich Story and RPG Elements. Don't know about rich story and RPG elements, it looks like a pretty nice retro shooter. And I'm, by pretty nice I mean that it's fast, action-packed, looks like it's impactful, cyberspace elements. Only 100 reviews but sitting at 81, definitely giving me Duke Nukem 3D and Dark Forces vibes. Don't know this publisher or developer, but if you already played Bolt Gun and you want another retro shooter, this looks like it could be it. For this time's talk segment, I want to talk about 2023. Usually dropped frames do their own end of the year game awards, and they used to do the second biggest disappointment of the year, formally sponsored by Blizzard Entertainment, and they're not doing it this year, and I think that's a shame, because I want to point out what I think is the biggest disappointment of the year in the gaming industry, and that's broken capitalism. 2023 showed us what comes out at the end of a two-year worldwide pandemic. In 2020, investment money was cheap and everyone was getting in on the party. Interest rates were low, so investment money went all over the place and game companies used it. Because a lot of game companies, I mean the biggest game companies, we are not the customers. Investors are the customers. So they pursued growth at all costs and it ended up gutting them in the end. If you haven't seen it already, this year marked anything between 7,000 and 11,000 layoffs, at least announced. That's a rough estimate across the wider game industry, and that's just horrible. I was actually one of those victims. Because in 2023, investment money wasn't so cheap anymore, interest rates were high, and some investments didn't get a return. The poster child of this is the Embracer Group, who bought out about 20 publishers and game studios. 
and we all cheered for them because it seemed like they were trying to make good on the gaming industry. But after a two billion dollar investment fell through, they started gutting studios and shutting them down. Don't get me wrong, I think Volition had it coming with the way Saints Row came out, but that's besides the point. Broken capitalism is what happens when companies pursue growth first and profitability second. So they usually operate at a loss. Some of the biggest companies you know today still operate at a loss. They grow really fast, get a lot of customers, and then they try to think about how to be profitable. But that includes worsening the terms for their users, which makes a lot of users angry. Some of them leave, but not all. But the whole experience for the end users become enshittified because they switch from serving the end user to serving the people who serve the end user for them. And when those people are knee deep inside the company, they turn to serve the shareholders because that's what a publicly traded company does. They try to increase profit for the shareholders, what is called fiduciary duty. So pretty much the entire company turns to shit because all they care about is how to be more profitable year to year. So the C-suite gets compensated for millions of dollars while every other department gets gutted. And the people who actually care about making good products, about making a good experience for the end users, get shunted out and the company remains a skeleton of their former glory, just riding old IPs with nothing new to show for it. And I'm hoping eventually, <coughs> bro, the users leave and nothing remains. As many smart people have already said, 2023 was a great year for games and a really bad year for game developers. And it all comes down, again, to bad management. I just don't understand why the managers don't get the cut instead. Because it's their fault. I just hope we learn that, like NFTs were a big scam, 2024 will be the year that everyone wakes up to broken capitalism. Because capitalism can work, capitalism can be beneficial as long as the incentives don't lead to all this enshittification. Thank you very much for watching, see you next time, stay good, have fun.